So guys, welcome back to channel Get to Bite once again. So continuing our free series of videos on timer input peripheral and STM32 controllers. In the last video, we get introduction of this peripheral. We started with its block diagram. Understand so hello, what are the PWM input and capture. the PWM uh, input capture mode? Okay. Now in this video, we are going to go in depth and understand the peripheral registers of the timer peripheral which will be used for our input capture mode configurations and settings okay so now without wasting time let's get started with this video So guys, now in this video, we are going to start with the PWM input mode. I will be programming the bare metal coding for uh, PWM input mode in which uh, uh, the frequency, duty cycle, period and all such values of the digital signal can be uh, get to know by make, by use of the PWM input mode. So now in this, we are going to use the two channels. One channel will be directly connected to our TIX pin and another channel will be connected to the internally. So now before moving to that, I will just get over you, overview that what are important registers will be there for programming the PWM input mode. So first register that will be used, uh, one of the registers will be the timer control register 2. So in this we have to select that what will be the TI1 selection. That is as I have told you, as I have told you that uh, timer 4, channel 1, channel 2, channel 3 and channel 4 we will be using the timer 4, channel 1 pin that is PB6 pin. So now uh, the, this PB6 pin this is a timer the channel 1 or every, every timer will be the TI1 okay external input pin 1. So we have to select that whether the timer X channel 1 pin is connected to the TI1 input or channel 1, 2, 3 are connected to the TIX input. So in this as only the channel 1 pin will be directly connected to our external input pin. So we will be using this register. Okay. And MMS master mode selection. These bits are used to select the information to be sent in master mode to slave timers for synchronization. And the combination is as follows. So in this we are not using any master or slave combination of timers. We will be using it in a uh, reset mode that is 0, 0, 0. Okay. So this thing has to be remembered. Another thing which has to be remembered is of the slave register, time x slave mode control register. As I've told you, we are not using any master or the slave configurations. So are all these ETP, EC, ETPS, ETF and MSM bits, which are basically the bits uh, for uh, configuring the clock of the slave and master, for configuring the trigger prescalers in case of the master and slave but as we are not using any of those things so all these values will be zero what will be used is the trigger selection and the sms our trigger selection for our this uh, what will be the trigger selection for this uh, s detector okay so that is filtered timer input one that is our trigger will be invoked that is any uh, this uh, signal will be captured when the timer input one pin will be get filtered, it will get any transitions change from low to high or high to light depending on the polarity that we configure. So that is why in case of trigger selection, we will be using 101. Okay, that is filter timer input one. Now here comes the slave mode selection. Now this will be used as reset mode. Why? Why our slave mode will not be disabled? Because in now, as I have told you, our main purpose, our main motive, the the PWM input mode, how it works is that whenever it detects any high or low edge, it will log the value into the Timex CCRX register. So that is what the reset mode will do. On the rising edge of the selected trigger input, on the rising edge of the inter of the uh, this in external input pin, uh, it will reinitialize the counter and generates an update of the register. So it will be like that one rising edge is detected and at that point our counter value is 10,000. So after that it will be again started from zero. So that when another edge of low uh, falling edge or the rising edge will come, its value can be captured freshly okay so reset mode it will be selected in slave mode selection 
next wins the uh, these will be our not of so yeah in this the curve which will be used is that we will be going to use the interrupts that whenever channel 1 will get any signal our interrupt will be invoked for the timer for channel 1 okay so are this bit cc1 capture 1 compare 1 channel this will be set to 1 but this will be set i am just telling you right now the bits what will be the order that i will tell you in subsequent uh, in this video in, uh, in just a moment now this is a status register it will be going to tell us different state the the status of the bits depending upon our the the status of a timer peripheral as we do and as we capture some register uh, the our uh, external input so it will be like when our cc1 channel 1 is configured as input so if cc1 f capture compare one interrupt flag it was zero so no interrupt capture no capture has occurred but if it is one so it means that cc r1 register has got so some values locked from time or x c and t count register that is are some falling or rising edge has come uh, or it has been seen by the of the external input pin okay and the another registers which will be very important is the timer x capture compare mode register so these will be the registers that will actually configure our input uh, mode peripheral okay so now in this input capture mode our icff cc2s uh, the channel 1 is used so we will be using these bits so cc1s will be uh, used as 0 1 channel 1 is configured as input ic1 is mapped on ti1 and whereas uh, same way cc2 which is channel 2 it will be marked as 10 cc2 channel is configured as input ic2 is marked to ti1 internally as i have told you in pwf mode okay let me just mark this thing also then comes our uh, this the input capture one filter so this is basically uh, the what does icf one bit will uh, byte will do bit will do that it uh, when our input in external signal will come so it needs some time for stabilizing okay so that a stable uh, pwm signals comes so that is what here is that n is equals to 2 n is equals to 4 so n is the number of consecutive events that will be used for detection of the high low rising edge so it means that when continuous two high falling edge will be detected or high rising edge will be detected then only our uh, that uh, input capture will be considered and these are those uh, we can configure it accordingly okay and this is the prescaler for the input capture and will be not be using any prescaler okay same out is for the time x ccm r2 in which channel 3 and channel 4 are there now comes this register this register is very important as this register will actually configure and unconfigure our timer chat pin okay so here what we will do uh, the as you can see this register has bits like cc4 cc4e cc3p cc3e and all like this and like 4 so cc1e means capture compare output enable so if channel 1 is configured as input now channel 1 will be configured as input from which location from this location from this registers okay input capture cc2s is configured as input cc2s is configured as output if input so to which channel okay so if cc1 is configured as input so on setting the cc1 evade our capture will be enabled that is as and when we will cap set the cc1 evade to 1 then only our capture events our timer input pin will be start capturing the output signal and this is the polarity okay that is at what edge either falling or at higher rising edge the counter has to be logged so if it is 0 that is capture will be done on the rising edge okay and if it is one that is inverted then capture will be done on the falling edge so we need to just know these things now these are the timer counter register and the prescaler in the auto reload register now prescaler value uh, to set the frequency of timer peripheral to operate at that is our timer clock frequency will be depending upon the our core clock frequency now core clock frequency is foc divided by the prescaler value P, uh, psc now psc value can have any value from 0 to 65535 so here i have set it as 32 psc will be set as 32 32 megahertz that is my foc which i have configured divided by 32 will give our timer clock frequency of 1 hertz 1 megahertz 
okay and auto reload register is the one that will be used when you're returning this register we decided what would be the minimum frequency that the timer can capture so minimum frequency will be equals to the timer x clock that is that we have uh, calculated from here upon arr okay so i have set the arr as 32 or 64 because i want to measure the low signals as low signals as 1 hertz or 5 15 hertz uh, up to the 1 kilohertz so you can use the it like these are the formulas in the code you will get to know the better things and these are the capture compare register ccr1 ccr3 and ccr4 okay so these are all the important registers that you need to be aware of and taken care of in the case of input peripheral now in this video let's get started now in the like next video we will get started with this bare metal coding in which i will be telling you that what is the order that is used and what all things we will be using so that's it for now like the video subscribe the channel and press the bell icon to get notified for new videos and share it with your friends